Hi guys and welcome to my review of the LG Magna and the LG G4C. And before you ask yourself why you only have one device, let me quickly try to explain this. This is the LG Magna, the 3G version with the MediaTek CPU. I checked for an LTE version, didn't find one and then I found the G4C that looks exactly the same, has exactly the same specs besides two things. We don't have this brushed aluminum look, but the diamond cut back from the G4 and we use a Snapdragon 410 and therefore have LTE. That's the only difference because I checked them in the store, they looked the same, they felt the same, internals are the same. So I am saying the LTE version is the G4C and the 3G version is the Magna. Okay, that's it. So let's check it then. Here we have the Magna with the brushed aluminum back. Quick side comparison here with 5.2 incher. You can see it is shorter, it is also more narrow, it is a little bit thicker, but that's okay. And you can already see it has a slight little curve, one that you wouldn't ever notice if you wouldn't know about it. Otherwise, once again, we have the brushed aluminum look here that feels incredibly nice. It is grippy all the time, doesn't really attract any fingerprints. As you can see, they just fade away in a mere of seconds. One thing that I like a lot about the Magna is compared to the Spirit and the Leon, this bag is built a little bit better in my opinion. It feels quite a bit more sturdy and substantial. Let me try to get it off. It is not as flimsy, of course it does bend, it is not the thickest material after all, but it has been done a little bit better in my opinion. Here we can see the replaceable 2540 battery, SD card slot, expandable to 32 gigabytes and the micro SIM. Once again, let's close it up. There is maybe a little point where you can see here, as you can see here, there's some minimal flex here, but something I never noticed during my review period and just right about now. Here we have the flash, the eight megapixel camera, the volume rocker that I like in terms of position because this is a good position for the power button. I would wish for it still to be on the side, just more convenient, but we have double tap to wake, double tap to stick. So that's actually fine. On the top, we have the headphone jack, microphone, micro USB and another microphone. And one thing that I also prefer on the Magna compared to the Spirit and the Leon, we have a notification LED, which is very handy and I missed it a lot on the other devices. Other than that, it feels great in the hand, it's very grippy, very secure to hold. One hand use is no problem. It doesn't maybe feel super premium, but it feels at least way more substantial, solid and actually really, really nice. So let's get to the display then. We have a 5 inch 720p display. In terms of sharpness, I don't see any issues. This is still for this size, a really nice and sharp PPI. Text looks sharp, everything else looks just quite good. In terms of the white balance, definitely a nice white point. The one thing that has to be noticed here, here we have a slight little yellow tint. Usually if you have the buttons here, you won't notice it and you really barely ever see it in normal life. So that's quite okay. In terms of blacks, I was totally fine. They could be a little bit deeper and the contrast ratio could be a little bit better because everything seems a little bit flat and brightened up. Colors as well, slightly, not, me, not maybe really undersaturated, but definitely not oversaturated. Maybe more on the more accurate side, but I think a lot of people will prefer a little bit more popping colors. That's something you won't get here. In terms of viewing angles, as you can see, it dims quite fast. It's a little bit better in this direction here, but this is something in normal use that I never notice is because when will you ever look at like this at your phone? And if you watch a video with someone, these angles are quite okay. So, my opinion on the display for a 720p it is really nice i would wish for a little bit less of this yellow tint but of course that could be a device specific thing and nothing that i would bother about so let's check the sound then and wait for the app to load okay Okay, once again, as on all the other LG devices, backfiring, not the best placement, but still, again, as on all the other ones, a really loud speaker, nicely balanced, because a little bit of bass, quite nice mids, and quite clear treble. Of course, it sounds away from you, so this is something you just have to live with. You will have to grip around it to get a little bit more reflected sound. 
But other than that, I'm actually fine. For games, it was good. For constant, for media consumption, it was also good. Of course, not great, but therefore very loud. You won't miss any notifications. And I'm still totally fine with it, mostly because it is just loud and doesn't sound bad at all. I can get past the just not that great placement. Okay, time for the performance check. We have the MediaTek CPU here and just right up front. The difference because um, in terms of the considering the Snapdragon. In apps, you won't really notice any difference. Both are capable of providing a really nice and smooth experience and it is mostly for gaming where you will notice one. Here you can see this runs absolutely fine. No problems here at all. Let's check G+. This is something you will notice. The home screen will have to redraw if you jump through many apps. This is just something, a burden. Maybe it's a memory leak of Lollipop 5.0.2, but maybe it's just the fact of just having one gigabyte of RAM. But as you can see here, apps, once in an app and fully loaded, it runs perfectly fine and smooth. Same goes for the browser, as you can see here. It will have to load the site once again. It isn't in the cache. Of course, my loading time is a little bit slow because my internet here isn't that good. And while loading, the page can be a little bit janky. But as you can see here, that's not even the case. As you can see here, browsing performance is nice. The multitasking performance, as you can see here, is just not the best. Apps will have to load. And also the home screen, as you can will see here, sometimes just has to redraw. This is just something you have to live with otherwise in this price range, but pretty much all the ones do it. If it's a Windows phone, if it's any other one gigabyte phone with Lollipop, you will notice this. I haven't tried the one gigabyte phone with KitKat anymore, so I can't say which one is the actual culprit. So that's it about that. Let's check the gaming performance here. This, once again, this is the MediaTek CPU. Not that great for gaming. The Snapdragon here does a little bit of a better job. You can see it is still absolutely playable. But the frame rates just aren't as stable and you will just see a little bit more frame drops. It is possible, but if you want a phone like this and you want to play games more often, at least a little bit higher demanding games, then go for the LTE version with the Snapdragon. Because within the apps, within the system, you won't really notice a lot of difference. I felt like the MediaTek was a little bit smoother within the apps, therefore multitasking felt a little bit better on the Snapdragon again, same as the gaming performance, but both are quite good. You can do pretty much the same. A little bit of an advantage though for the Snapdragon. Okay, let's go to the battery. One hour of charging gets you to 40%, two hours of charging gets you to 70%, and after three hours and 10 minutes, you are at 100%. And if there is one thing I have to mention that is absolutely great, then it is the battery life. I actually haven't expected it to be that good because I already saw the MediaTek is capable of some really nice results, but this one complete day, five hours and 20. Absolutely respectable performance. Here once again, two full days with four and a half hours. And this is the last one I just had today, two hours, uh, two days and two hours with slightly more than four hours and 20 minutes, but there has to end. We still have 11% left. And the one thing that has to be mentioned here because the last test was a complete Sunday, a complete Monday, and I got even back from the work on Tuesday. This means this is more like three days of use because I would have been able to get three times to work and come back with four and a half hours of screen on time. That, in my opinion, is really, really not just uh, respectable, but very impressive. And the standby drain maybe is a lot about that because the standby drain with less than half a percent an hour is maybe the cause why we get this great battery life. On one day, I could even see a lot of people getting maybe six hours because I use the brightness of 70%. If you go lower, you can get more. So that's definitely great. And one thing I wanted to mention about the display, sunlight, re sunlight readability was quite good. I haven't expected it to be because the display itself isn't that bright because I had to use 70%, but 100% was quite good and in sunlight quite nice. As for the software, not something I want to talk a lot about because I did a dedicated video and you can just check that. We have double tap to sleep, double tap to wake, which I like because sometimes the buttons just aren't accessible. In terms of software, you can see here, here it maybe doesn't look like stock Android at all, 
But in terms of the menus and everything, it is pretty much the same. We are using 5.0.1. So maybe there is still a memory leak, maybe not, but you get a lot from this software. It feels a lot like, as you can see here, stock Android with a nice few enhancements because fully customizable quick settings. You have a nice little lock screen with shortcuts, something I really like to see and you get a few nice little things as well. So just check my dedicated video for that. I still say it, I would even prefer this UI over stock energy because the nice enhancements are really useful and there is nothing gimmicky, nothing I wouldn't use. Absolutely great. Okay, for the camera then. The pictures were really nice. Color balance was done really good, quite accurate pictures and quite sharp for an eight megapixel. I actually didn't expect that in this price range. Definitely really respectable. Colors seem nice. They could maybe sometimes overexpose a little bit with really harsh light. But other than that, the balance between dark and bright things were done really good. So exposure was also not the issue. Of course, there is still a lot of improvement left in terms of sharpness, color accuracy and some other things compared to the best cameras. But in this price range, definitely really great. Low light performance, okay, that wasn't that good. It was quite grainy and blurry, but that's to be expected in this price range. And the selfie here, as you can see, gets the job done actually quite good. Video performance was also quite good, quite smooth. The autofocus worked quite reliable. Colors were here also really good. Movement was nice, no real artifacts or anything like that. So definitely a capable camera for videos and for video and for photos. So let's get to the recap then design and build quality definitely the best of the lg bunch better than the lg spirit and better than the lg leon also with five inch the biggest display feels really nice in the hand quite substantial maybe not super premium but nothing you would have to worry about in terms of display really nice display quite good with sunlight reliability sharp enough Maybe not the most saturated color, but quite accurate and quite okay. A little bit of a yellow stain though on the bottom, but this could be just device specific and nothing to bother about. The sound, maybe not the best placement, but therefore quite loud and quite good color ba um, tonal balance for media consumption, good enough. Of course, not for something really sophisticated, but for the certain YouTube videos here and there, absolutely fine. Performance for this price range, Pretty much in line with all the other devices. Multitasking as well. Limited as on all the other devices. Very smooth though. Not really any stutters and hiccups. Once the app is loaded, it will be a great experience. Just multitasking, jumping between apps is noticeably slower than on something like a two gigabyte device. In terms of perf um, software, I'm absolutely happy with that. It provides you all the nice and, and really useful gimmicks or nice things you would like to see and actually no gimmicks, sorry about that. So I really like the software. As for the battery life, maybe actually one of the most impressive things about this device because maybe because I didn't expect it to be that good. Five and a half hours of screen on time over one day, four and a half over two days, almost three days. And I see people actually even getting maybe six hours of screen on time, which in this price range is very, very hard to beat for that size factor. Then the last thing to talk about would be the camera. Actually, surprisingly good. I hadn't expected it to be that nice and sharp, detailed, really nicely balanced. So definitely no flaws here. Would I recommend this device? I would definitely recommend this device. And I would actually go as far and prefer it over the Moto G. I also tried it for my colleague side by side. This one is a little bit more narrow, a little bit shorter. Therefore, it felt a little bit thicker because we have different rounded corners. They were a little bit smaller designed on the Moto G. But in terms of battery life, it was better. In terms of performance, pretty much the same. Of course, with Moto G, we could get a little bit few updates, which I actually don't expect on this device anymore. So I think you will be stuck on 5.0.1. But multitasking was pretty much as limited as it was on the all, all the other Lollipop 1 gigabyte devices. Display, in my opinion, was better 
just in terms of brightness but maybe no sorry i have to actually take it back the model g was the better display slightly better white overall better therefore the sound was louder maybe not better sounding but the cameras were pretty similar so i like it a lot and between the three the lg leon the lg spirit this would be my favorite, but of course there is a price difference and it's for everyone else to decide. And once again, if you can't decide between the G4C and the Magna, like I said, if you want to play a little bit more games, then I would go for the G4C. Otherwise, also, if you don't need LTE, you can go for the Magna as well. The G4C is just LTE and a little bit better gaming performance. That's about it in terms of difference. Okay, that's it for my review of the LG Magna and G4C. If you have anything to add, if you have any questions, if you can't decide between anyone, just leave me a comment down below. And it would be really nice if you leave me a like and maybe reshare this video because this would just help my, my, help my exposure. Okay, until next time, bye.